Hello, I'm a Tuba Judge and I'm so, so blessed. Listen, I really, really feel blessed sitting down here and receiving words from the Lord for your sake. And so I don't take these things lightly because I see God loves you so much. You can be in that room or in that car, wherever you are watching, wherever you are listening right now. God values it so much, so much so that he puts me here to bring God's word to you. Are you ready to call forth your daily bread? Now, this is why the daily bread has to come. It has to come. You know why? Because God has already made provision for it before bringing the knowledge to you. So carry this mindset as we pray now. Are you ready? Say with me, say, Father. Listen, say it with a smile on your face. Praise God. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. Yes, it's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. And even as we go into today's broadcast, Lord, I declare every body is lifted. Every yoke is destroyed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the yoke of sickness is gone from you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that, that, that burning sensation in your heart, I command it to stop right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed in your chest. Be healed in your chest. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. That, 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 I, I don't know, I'm seeing someone, you're hiccuping, you're hiccuping, and it, it, it's like, you can't control it, just comes. I, whatever it is, whatever the cause of that thing is right now, I command it to stop. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I speak healing to the part of your body that needs healing right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The pain and weakness in your waist is gone right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. Yes, you are the one taking away every burden, every pain. You are taking it away right now. And we glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, I told you, when we talk about Jesus, he shows up. He shows up. Now, don't forget to call us and let us know what God has done in your life. Now, we continue. Matthew chapter 17, Jesus was asking the disciples, Who do you say that I am? And Peter spoke up and says, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's who Jesus is. Now, I told you yesterday, Peter, those words that came out of his mouth can be termed by the Pharisees and scribes and Sadducees as blasphemous. So Peter took a risk to open his mouth and say what came to his mind. I, I use that phrase, what came to his mind. But Jesus, confirming it to Peter, says, you didn't just think that up. My Father in heaven revealed that to me. So Peter, you just got a revelation direct from God. <laughs> Not an angel, no, direct from God. Whoa! Now, he didn't ask the other disciples. I wonder what they would have said. But you see, I told you Jesus was concerned to know what was in their hearts concerning him. He was concerned to know have they come to the place of knowledge yet. Because if you, if you study scriptures, you realize that after this um, experience, then he began to talk about his death. Why did he wait for this experience with the disciples? Why did he wait to ask them first, who do you say that I am? 
And after Peter finished talking, he, he educated them more. Then he began to talk about his death. I'm going to die. Why would you the Christ? Now that's one of the reasons the Bible said Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. You remember? Now that's when, that's where he now turned to me and says, get thee behind me, Satan. I mean, he's the fellow that just received revelation from heaven. Now, but you see, understand the mind of Peter. Jesus just confirmed to him that, look, you just spoke the truth because this is who I am. And my father in heaven gave you that truth. So that moment, Peter felt he was the custodian of a powerful revelation. And this same Jesus now coming again to say, I'm going to die. I'm going to suffer many things. And then, then you know, and I, huh? <laughs> does this guy know what he's talking about? Doesn't he realize what I just told him from God the Father? That he is the Christ. Now he's talking about death. Does Christ die? No. <laughs> I mean, the Bible says, he says, Jesus, please come. And he said, what is it, Peter? He said, no, just come, come, come. Follow me, please. I don't want to tell others to. Just come. And then the Bible said, he took him aside and began to rebuke him. He said, come on, Jesus. I didn't want to say this thing in public. You, are you forgetting who you are? I'm respecting you. That's why. See, but see, this thing you are doing is wrong. You have taught us how to confess. You have taught us how to use our mouth. Now look at what you're saying from here, that you will die. What kind of nonsense is that? And instead of Jesus to say, hmm, Peter, I'm sorry, you know. And if Peter was too knowledge, we say, look, what I'm doing is not even Moses did it to God. And God repented. So you too, you need to repent. And Jesus said, <laughs> Get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> like, I, I wonder how Peter must have felt. I mean, can you imagine this guy? I mean, he, he, what are you trying to say? Me, Satan. I'm now Satan. That's what Jesus said. Get thee behind me, Satan. Now, Jesus had to wait for them to get this revelation and now of course the moment peter spoke that up and jesus confirmed it all the disciples that believed in him knew from that moment that truly he is the christ now what does that mean that meant now this revelation alone meant they are ready to receive his ministry I'll tell you something. <laughs> you know, while Jesus was alive, walking this earth, they, now this was just what Peter said, they didn't say this outside, that he was the Christ. He didn't refer to himself as the Christ outside. Everyone knew him as Jesus. Jesus. You dare not call him Jesus Christ outside. Christ was not his son name. Christ was the embodiment of his personality. You need to understand this. So, when Jesus had released that understanding and revelation to them, now he began to walk from that moment towards his real self which is Christ when he was on the earth he didn't function as the Christ no he didn't though he was but he didn't so what do you mean he did so what did he function as? he was a man now read read scriptures read everything every prophecy that was spoken about Jesus about him you know um, um, Zachariah called him the branch now that's what Zachariah called him, calls him, the branch. He said, the man who shall be born. Maybe we should look at that scripture now. Let me show you Zachariah chapter 6, verse 12. Zachariah chapter 6 and verse 12. It says, and speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch. And he shall grow up out of his place and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Now, note this. 
Hmm. Hmm. Let me read verse 13. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. Now, this is big. Now, this, this is prophecy. And you don't, you don't just look at prophecy with a straight um, English eye. No. See, sometimes prophecies are interpreted based on the understanding you have today. But that may not be the fullness of the interpretation. So that's why prophecy needs time. And most times it is when it is fulfilled that it is interpreted. You, you know, that, that's why I remember the last time I, I did a series on the book of Revelation. And after that series, this is a few years ago. After that series, and I was fellowshipping with the Lord. Then the Lord began to open my eyes to a lot of things. And then I realized many of the things I just finished teaching were, <laughs> were not in the right perspective. Now, I, I, I thought I had carried this revelation for a while. But then I began to realize, whoa, whoa, whoa. And that's when I said to myself, I said, you know what? There's no point trying to explain the book of Revelation. Let's just wait for the fulfillment. Let's just wait. Because, you see, there is no amount of preparation we are going to prepare. Because, you see, there is no, I, 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 there is no one there is no one today that can accurately, I'm, tell, I'm saying this. Now, you may think you know it, but if you're sincere in your heart, you will know it's not so. There is no one that can accurately explain the book of Revelation. Even John himself, if he comes down now, he cannot accurately, you know why? Because there are certain things that were spoken in that book that the vocabulary and the technology of the world has not advanced to yet. So whatever interpretation you give it today, give yourself five years, give yourself 10 years time, you will change that interpretation. Why? Because as knowledge increases, you will look at it again and say, oh, I, I thought this was what it meant. Now, for example, you see this, he says, the man whose name is the branch and shall grow out of it, he shall build the temple of the Lord. Now, 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 you read this and say, oh, that means the temple of the Lord is going to be rebuilt. So when you say the temple of the Lord, what do you think about? The temple in Jerusalem, the temple Solomon built, the temple that was the whole glory of Israel and, and, and the whole world came to see that temple. You remember the story. And... You look at this and say, so that temple is going to be rebuilt. Because he says, he said it here, he says, he shall build the temple of the Lord. But brothers and sisters, this wasn't talking about physical temple. So Jesus is not going to build any physical temple. Yet Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Jesus has something to build. He calls it the church. This prophecy was referring to the church, but he called it the temple. Now, because we, we are used to interpretation of what temple is, we now interpret this to be, oh, the so, so there are people who have seen this scripture, and because they, they know by understanding that Jesus is not going to come and start building a temple. So they felt this is not referring to Jesus. This is referring to maybe whoever now. That someone will come and will rebuild the temple. And so, so, so many people are waiting for this day. There are, there are ministries who collect offerings, you know, for the rebuilding of the temple. So they are, they are waiting for this day to come. He wasn't talking about a physical temple. The physical temple will not be rebuilt. How do you know? Jesus himself said it. He said it when the temple was standing. They were walking around the temple one day and, and the disciples were like, man, so the glory of this temple. And Jesus looked at them and said, wow, see this beautiful thing you're seeing? A day will come when one stone of this temple will not stand on another. 
and he left it that way. Now you don't you don't you don't leave such words open. No, no, not even open. He closed it. Says that's what's going to happen. He should have said, nevertheless, at the season of the Lord, it shall be raised or it shall be built. He never said anything like that. He said, a time will come when not one stone. You know what that means? As in, you know when you destroy something, you if you go pick things for testing, there you can say, oh, this one and this stone, they are of the same building. He says, you will not find two stones together that belongs to this temple. Everything will be cut away to different places. And that's the story of that temple. So Jesus was referring to the church, which is not a physical building. Praise God. My time is up. Hey, you are that temple that Jesus is building. If only you will understand. Father, I thank you. Yes, you are building your temple even today. And Lord, we submit ourselves to be used as stones in that building. And you only beautify your stones and accomplish your work in us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Praise God. Have the best day ever. In Jesus' name. Bye-bye.